So it's the middle of January out here in Milton, Delaware. Why am I here? I'm here to visit one of the coolest places ever. This is Dogfish Head Brewery. I'm John Biggs, and this is TechCrunch Makers. I know you're gonna dig this. So this is our original brewing system. It makes about 12 gallons of beer in every batch. You gotta leave a little space for the boil. Basically, homebrew scale equipment. When we opened this in 1995, we were the smallest commercial brewery in America. So actually we're getting a little lesson in brewing as well, right? Yes, you are. The base grain, the fermentable sugar source in most beers is uh, base malt, barley. Now the largest conglomerate brewers use a lot of rice and corn, cheaper adjuncts to make the beer uh, you know, lower in flavor, uh, lighter beers. We do more flavorful beers. Juniper, coriander, cocoa nibs, saffron. Our brewery when we opened in 95, in that era there were 600 breweries in America and lots of those awesome first generation craft breweries made all grain great beer, but they were referencing European beer styles, English pale ales, German lagers. Our goal is to be the first commercial brewery that looked at the entire global landscape of culinary ingredients and brought culinary ingredients into the world of beer. So back in 95, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, we were actually made fun of or actually pissed off a lot of traditionalist beer people. Like, why are you putting maple syrup in a beer? You're screwing with the tradition. <laughs> so we took our lumps, but now it's awesome to see this niche for more you know, flavor forward, exotic ingredient beers. This is pretty much the best startup story ever. You can see our evolution of our scale from tiniest brewery in America to now I think we're the 14th largest. So we're very proud of this room. We do a lot of wood aging and so this room kind of brings together the ancient technologies of brewing, i.e. the wood with the most modern stainless steel equipment custom built for us in Germany. We got here right when we are brewing our Namaste. Belgian white beers, wheat beers, traditionally are made with orange peel and coriander. With ours we use entire orange slices. Uh, these are the largest wooden brewing vessels built in America since before Prohibition. These three are oak and the two behind you are made of a very unique exotic but sustainably harvested wood from Paraguay called Palo Santo wood. We're the only brewery in the world aging beer on this exotic wood. Next I'm going to show you uh, the, the catalyst of all fermentation, the one that as a winemaker you're familiar with which is the yeast room. All right, super. Each of these vessels starts with you know a, a thimble full of, of yeast okay and then this whole system injects uh, oxygen sugar and pre-fermented beer into these tanks so every bottle is gonna have the same profile no matter what yeah. based on these guys taste yep do those guys ever get tired of drinking beer or do they just want to go have a have a have a coke probably <laughs> they, they take it very seriously though and we have a whole sensory program in our company so an accountant with an awesome palate or a wow. forklift driver might be on our sensory panel next to a brewer or a barrel guy, you know. So uh, we're pretty, we're blind on if you've got an awesome palate, we don't care what, de what department you work at, right. Dogfish. Your, part of your job is three times a day coming down and trying beer. This is the general testing, did you see that? Yeah, basically if you take a close up on that, it tells you the best way to evaluate a beer, whether you're on a sensory panel at a brewery, or at home, this is the best way to... So you shouldn't just chug it. Yeah, the short version of this is sip, don't chug. Okay. So from here you want to go check out the brand new Spiffy bottle line. Absolutely. You're going out to the back 40 and you're going to see a giant beer umbilical cord going right. out to the back building and you're going to hang with my good friend Al who's running the line right now. All right, and then we'll see you back here. Yeah, come back for a All beer. Right. Sounds good. Hey John, how are you? Hey. All right, perfect. This is our new facility called the Off-Centered Center, or the OCC as we like to call it. And this is the home of our new bottling line for 12 ounce bottles and our future new keg lines. This whole vision right here, this brings a tear to my eye. This is like, this is like when they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant in at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Somewhere in there is the bottle for me. It is a 12 ounce uh, only line. It runs at one speed, which is 39,000 bottles per hour. Okay. We've managed to hit about 10 to 12,000 cases a day and that's just in one shift wow. running. From there, the glass is transferred into a single file line and it comes down along the back side of the room 
and it enters our filling station, which is behind the glass and steel wall. Now, that littler stainless and glass window room there is the labeler, obviously moving quite fast. And once the bottles come out of there, they get a date code on each bottle, and they're ready to go in the cardboard mother cartons. From there, the cases get a date code, and then everything goes out on a pallet to our warehouse to be shipped out. So do you remember your instructions in the sensory lab? How are you supposed to appreciate this beer? I'm supposed to sniff it. Yes. And then I'm not supposed to shoot it. No. There you go. A couple little quick sips. Move it around your tongue. Oh, okay. I moved a little bit. I yes? I'll, I'll try it again. Hold on a sec. There's no real wrong way. There's more right ways, but there's no wrong ways. I got it. I think got I got it. it. So that's the namaste. All right. Cheers. So what's next for uh, Dogfish Head? What's next for us? Well, let's see. This year we're building a much bigger distillery. We're one of the first craft distilleries in America. We've had a distillery for about 13 years. So you've been doing this since 95. What advice do you give for somebody who's starting out from literally the bottom? Because, I mean, you guys had a small, a small brew pub that yep. you grew into this. Yeah. Uh, just uh, follow your dreams <laughs> and uh, figure out something to be passionate about more than just money. Because if the biggest driver's money as an entrepreneur, you're going to come up against moments when you don't have any money. If all you had was a passion for money, you're going to give up. And we never did because we've always had a passion to make off-center beers, beers like those that have never existed before. And, Passion's uh, pretty easy when you get to make this stuff. It is. It's pretty, uh, we're pretty lucky to have the jobs that we have and we don't take that for granted. Right. We love what we do. Well, thanks a lot, Sam. Thanks for coming out thanks and doing this, John. Thanks. Enjoy your namaste. I'm John Biggs and this is TechCrunch Makers. Mm -hmm.